All right, here's a, we're going to do several examples here, how to use the chain rule. Um, so in, in these examples, we're going to find dz dt or dw dt. This one here, if we take a look at what we actually have, um, z is a function of x and y, x is a function of t, and y is a function of t. So if I did all the substitution, I would have z is a function of one variable. So what I really want to find is dz dt, not partials, dz dt, because these two are functions of single variables here. All right, so if I want dz dt according to the chain rule, that's the partial of z with respect to x times dx dt, plus the partial of z with respect to y times dy dt. Now all I do is I find those four pieces and I multiply them together. There is one more step that you have to think about before that, but let's just, let's just find those four pieces, okay? So let's see if I can find my work that I did previously so I don't make too many mistakes here. So let's see, I need dz, partial of z with respect to x. So let's think about what z is in general. So z is x times y to the minus 1. I'm writing it like that. It's easier to take the derivative. So if I take the partial of z with respect to x, that means y is the constant. So uh, the derivative of x is just 1. So the partial is y to the minus 1 or 1 over y. Partial of z with respect to y, well, that means now x is the constant, so I take the derivative of this guy. So I bring down the power, and I subtract 1 from the power, and the constant comes along. I am going to simplify that, minus x over y squared. So far, so good. Now I need to find the derivative of x with respect to t. So here's x. So if I want dx dt, I just think calc 1 in this case, derivative sine is cosine of t. And then I need dy dt, derivative of cosine is minus sine of t. Okay, so now I'm just going to take these four things, one, two, three, four, and put them into the formula. So dz dt is equal to 1 over y times cosine of t plus minus x over y squared times negative sine of t. Now this is the kicker here. Most students think they're done, but this tells me right now that my derivative has to be a function of t only. So I have y's and x's and things over here I shouldn't have. So I have to somehow rewrite that as a function of t only. Well, luckily I have these guys here to make substitution. So I know x is sine of t, so I can replace x with sine of t. y is cosine of t, so I can replace that. So I get 1 over cosine of t times cosine of t plus, now those this, these cancel, so everything's positive here. So I have sine of t. because x is sine of t divided by cosine squared t times sine of t. So I keep simplifying that cosine of t over cosine t is 1. Here I get sine squared of t over cosine squared t. And that's 1 plus tangent squared. And if you know your trig, that's going to be secant squared t. Great. Now that seems really nice um, if we think about the beginning here. If z is x over y, that's sine over cosine. The derivative, or sine over cosine is tangent. The derivative of tangent is secant t. So if we had done it the calc 1 way, we would have still had secant t. We do it the calc 3 way, we get the same thing. So it kind of gives you an idea that they actually perform the same function and perform the correct function. Good. All right, let's try this next problem. All right, now we have w is a function of x, y, and z. It's really tiny, sorry. So 
w is a function of x, y, and z, and x is e to the t, y is t squared, z is t to the third. Let me see if I can move this down just a little bit so you can see it a little better. There you go. Good. So that's different from the previous one uh, because I have three things here instead of one. But instead of two, I'm sorry, we have three things here instead of two. So pff, let's not make a big deal out of this. We just still know that if I substituted these three things back in here, w would be a function of t only. So what we want here is dw dt. Now, how does the formula differ? So before, it was just four terms, one with the x's, one with the y's. Now, down here, we're going to have three terms, one with x, one with y, and one with z. So how's that going to look? So this will be, uh, let's see if I think about this, a partial of w with respect to x, dx dt, plus the partial of w with respect to y, dy dt. And just as, soon, as we've seen in other section, a logical extension, partial of w with respect to z, dz dt. Nice. And again, we just find those six pieces and stick them in there and simplify as much as possible. I want to show you a little bit of simplifying before we go, okay, before we start putting everything in the formula so it makes it a little easier on this. All right, so I need uh, the partial of W with respect to X. So if I think about this, I had to take the derivative of that power with respect to X. So X is a variable, YZ are the constants. So the part, a derivative of x is 1, so I, my constant ends up to be yz, e to the x, y, z. Now my partial of w with respect to y, uh, that's going to leave me with the constant of x, z up front, e to the x, y, z. And the partial of w with respect to z, um, let me move this around a little bit, sorry. This is going to be x, y e to the x, y, z. Remember, when you do the chain rule with a power, take the derivative of the power, and that is what's multiplied up front, times the original exponential. Now, what I'm going to do here before we go too far is write everything in terms of t first. It does make it a little bit easier when for this particular problem because we got lots of things going on. Now, the original problem says x is e to the t y is t squared, z is t to the third. So I'm going to let y be t squared, z be t to the third, and then this is going to be e to the e to the t times t squared times t to the third. I'm just literally substituting in everything in. Doing a little bit of algebra, this becomes t to the fifth. I add those powers, and here I can add those powers, e to the e to the t, t to the fifth. Now here, x is e to the t, z is defined as t to the third, and then this guy is exactly the same, e to the e to the t, t to the fifth. And then the last step here, x is e to the t, y is t squared, then e to the x, y, z is e to the e to the t, t to the fifth. All right, so I have my three partials, one, two, three, already in terms of t. That's important. Now I need to find the other three things. I need dx dt, which will already be in terms of t, dy dt, and dz dt. Okay, dx, or x is e to the t, so dx dt is e to the t. That's a nice one. y is t squared. So dy dt is 2t, and z is t cubed. I think I said y squared should be t squared. z is t cubed, so dz dt is 3t squared. All right, so we have our six things, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now we just have to multiply them all together to get our derivative. So dw dt is equal to 
partial of, I'm going to move this a little bit, partial of W with respect to X. So T to the fifth, E to the E to the T, T to the fifth, times DX DT, E to the T. Sorry, my handwriting just suddenly got very horrible there. Sorry, apologize. And then I have to add to that e to the t, this partial of w with respect to y, t to the third, e to the e to the t, t to the fifth, times d y dt to t. Plus, hang on a second, I can't see what I'm doing here. Sorry about that. So here's partial of w with respect to x. Partial W and then dx dt, partial W with respect to y, dy dt. And I need the partial of W with respect to t. That's e to the t, t squared, e to the e to the t, t to the fifth times 3, t squared. Okay. So every single one of these terms has this lovely guy here. So because this is so messy, I'm just going to factor that one out. I think they all actually have e to the t as well, but let's not worry about that. I'm going to take out e to the e to the t, t to the fifth out of everything. So what's left here? e to the t, t to the fifth, plus, so I have a t to the third and a t, so that's t to the fourth. So I have two e to the t, t to the fourth, plus three, I have t squared, t squared, that's t to the fourth e to the t, t to the fourth. Now you can see here that I have those two guys are the same term, so I can add the coefficients. e, e to the t, t to the fifth, e to the t, t to the fifth, and then I have five e to the t's, t to the fourth. Now you could factor out an e to the t if you want to continue, you wouldn't have to. Um, I factored that out just because I get tired of writing it more than anything, more than any other useful. Because I remember telling you in class, don't factor if you don't have to. But in this case, because this just looked so nasty. Look at that thing. It just looks so nasty that I don't even want to do anything with it. So the best way to handle it is by factoring. All right, so there's another example. Again, piece by piece using the formula makes this work and make sure you understand what each of these pieces is asking you for. Let's do a couple more examples.